Okay, hello and welcome back to Student Days Tutorials. Um, I'm going to be doing now the implementation of Monte Carlo and MATLAB. Um, this is, goes back to the last video where we were looking at a circle inside, inscribed a, inside a square. And so let's just go ahead and begin with that. Again, this code will be available on the website in the bottom. And um, yeah, so let's go look at it. So the first thing we're going to look at is the Monte Carlo iterative method. And we're going to, this one, this part of the code is used for visualizing um, using uh, a, a evenly distributed sampling. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, the number of times we're going to place a random number inside the object. So it'll be R n, and then um, these are going to define our initialized variables. And I also I'm trying to include in general in a lot of the code now um, different uh, tools in MATLAB, different uses, different functions. So you're kind of like learning multiple things at once. Here we got the Monte Carlo. And what I'm going to add to it is using these symbolic variables so that we can use this thing called easy plot which is a tool for plotting functions very quickly. So what we do is we define a symbolic variable C and then um, we then define that into the functions of interest. Here's our two functions. And then um, this will basically store X and Y into variables. Uh, sine and cosine, these, these symbolic variables. And then we'll just run the plot, the easy plot. What we'll do is basically take that function and plot it inside of it. And here we can see a range, so here's our circle. We have a range that's pretty far out, but I'm just going to basically allow the randomization to plot within this range around the circle. So we're going to go through it iteratively. Um, I put at the very bottom a rapid code that can be used just to literally run the simulation. But since you want to see the bits and pieces of the simulation here, we can go through this. So we go we start off t, t equals 1. And what we're going to do is generate a set of random numbers. Here is the general formula over a range from A to B. So A to B is here is from negative 1 to 1, because that's the range of our circle. And we're going to do that in both the x and y domain. So we run that. And then what we're going to do, the, so we're gonna, we just generate a random point within this range. So it's a random point that's within this square, right? Now we want to go, well, is that point within the circle, or is it within the square? Or, I mean, is it just within the square, or is it also within the circle? So that is, is it in these little corners or not? Well, one way to do that is for every random point we generate, we ask, well, is that point further than the value of 1 away from the origin, or a value of r, the radius, away from the origin? If it's greater than, then we know it's outside the circle, and if it's less than, we know it's within the circle. So what we do is we define, we calculate that distance. This is your standard equation for distance from the origin. And then, um, we then use that over here, and we, and we figure out, okay, is it greater or less than or equal to 1? If it is, then we're just going to basically add that to it, and then uh, add that to the total, of uh, the running total for each iteration. And then we're going to do that and compute the estimated value of pi, which is this value here. And then this is just for plotting purposes. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we go. What we have here is that there's a single point plotted right now. It's within the circle. And so since it's within the circle, we're going to give it a value. So we're going to say, out of the total number we've put, we a total number of uh, randoms, random uh, sampling we've done, we've gotten 1, and it's within the circle. So we're going to end up with 1 over 1 here. This will be 1 over 1 times 4 is the value 4. So this is where our estimate of pi after one iteration is equal to 4. But once we do it more and more times, we start to see the estimate evolved. And this is as we randomly place different points. And the estimate starts to evolve. And notice it's starting to get there's, there's some noise, it's not always getting it correctly, but it starts to asymptote closer to 3.14. Well, at least it's around 3 right now. Okay, now it's starting to come in, starting to move a little bit closer. A little bit closer. And you can see it's not going to get it exactly right, and we just did 100 samples. So the first thing is, we had a completely uniform sampling, uniform distribution here of these random points. And that allows us to get a percentage or a ratio of how many points are inside the circle relative to the square. And that allows us then to calculate the value of pi. And as you can see, there's kind of this nice little contours to the way this estimate goes. It's not a single value just descending down. It moves around. And this is after 100 trials. So let's increase it. Let's see what it looks like over a 1,000 trials. Just change this value. And I'm just going to go rapidly through this. And here we go. Boom. Notice at the very, let me stop for a second. Notice at the very beginning, the point was outside of the circle. And so that brought us to 0. And now we descend, uh, ascend upward rather than descend downward from 4. That's all about how the initial condition in this case was. Again, it's a random variable. And very quickly, 
we see after a thousand we get a very very strong asymptote again it's not exactly at uh, 3.14 but it starts to get within the range and it's not exactly going to hit it but it, it's going to be right around there and so that's the idea of Monte Carlo right there we have a we basically simulate a random number using rand and then we uh, attribute some function to it so we can constrain how the randomization goes and then that randomization dictates what types of uh, value we're going to get. Here we're going to get, because we get a uniform sampling, we're going to get a rate, we're going to get the ratio or the percentage in the circle relative to the square. And that ratio, due to this Monte Carlo simulation, allows us then to compute pi. And notice that pi is not an exact calculation, and it doesn't come after a couple samples. We have to sample quite a bit, and it's an asymptotic approximation. And those are the critical ideas involved with Monte Carlo provides you. So again, so it's all about the distribution and how many times you're sampling, and that'll dictate what type of output you have out of the system. So I wanted to show you, you know, how different it'll perform depending on how different your distribution input is. So we're gonna run it again, but this time we're gonna do it with. Uh, well, hold on, it's busy. It's thinking. Oops. Okay, we're gonna run it again right now, but this time instead of using a um, I'm sorry, instead of using a uh, completely even distribution of sampling, we're going to put in a Gaussian distribution. And here our sigma is 0.2, and this is basically going to keep the distribution um, centered at zero, mu zero, and it's going to be about, all of it's going to be inclusive to about negative one and plus one. It's not going to go much further out of that range. And let's see how this system performs. Can you predict what it's going to be? I'm sure you can. So here's our first point second point and notice because we're sampling a Gaussian with centered at zero all our points are inside the circle and we're not going to ever get out of it and so our estimate is four our estimates off because we're not getting the pr appropriate ratio right well let's say what happens if we spread this out let's make it say 0.5 so it's a much broader distribution and run it again actually we got to run it again from here okay and we're much broader now, so we get outside of the circle a little bit. And, you know, we're, we're, we got a little bit closer. We're at 3.28. And notice that because now we're outside the circle, our estimates get a little bit bigger. That is, we're kind of broadening the center point. So rather than having all the points focused in the center of the circle, by broadening the distribution of the Gaussian, we get a little bit further outside of it. It's kind of almost simulating, if you make it large enough, that even distribution within the range of interest. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's really get really, really broad. Let's make it like five, for example. Then we make that distribution very broad. Let's see how the system performs. Well, we're way outside the circle. And see how awful that was? Because the circle was so small, the whole system was just all over, all over the place. It never really landed in the circle very much. Basically, I didn't constrain it to that region of interest, and our estimates all the way off. If I had constrained it to just that region, it, it would have performed much better, but this is completely open-ended distribution. But the idea is that your distribution is affecting the way the whole system is performing, right? And here's one last aspect. This is, again, the number of times. So what this little simulation does is it says, what is our final value um, after, say, we do 100 iterations. What is the final value? And then do that a 1,000 times and see what is the distribution of final values given that we just iterate 100 times. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And this is what the distribution looks like. It's centered around 3.14, kind of. This is a little bit of right around there. But you can see the width of the distribution. And so that that's what the, the output will look like. So again, it's an approximation with the mean value around the point of interest but again we've only had a hundred iterations let's say we did a thousand iterations notice that the distribution got tighter and it's a little bit peakier right there and now let's do it ten thousand times again it has much more constraints and we're getting much more accurate estimates and this is just an example of what the final value will look like after a number of iterations okay alrighty then the, the, the code will be available. Oh, and below is just a way for doing it rapidly. And so, yeah, so just go ahead and uh, check out the website to get the code there. And if you have any questions, go ahead and post them. Um, but, yeah, this should be sufficient for the introduction of Monte Carlo. And now we're going to move into Markov chains.